Greetings, everyone. It's our last morning for me, our last time zone of Theros Beyond Death ranked draft for a little stretch at least. We're going to get uh, Ravnica Allegiance back tomorrow, I, I hear. But we're going to take advantage of best of one while we have it. Uh, we are we don't have a, gem, a gold count to pay for gold, but we got plenty of gems. We're happy about that. We are going to dive in for our what what will be our last ranked draft of Theros Beyond Death for I guess two weeks, and then uh, I'll start polling from here. We'll poll whether we're going to do RNA or Theros Best of Three on any given day. I'm happy to do either. I like uh, both of these formats, and. Uh, we are going to dive in now, but before I do, I'm going to thank my sponsor, Card Kingdom, of course. Card Kingdom are purveyors of all your physical magic needs, your tabletop gaming service. They've got supplies, singles, sealed product, everything you need to get that game going that you want on your tabletop. Uh, you want to bling out that commander deck, maybe. You want to uh, build your first cube. When, uh, one thing uh, I suggest people, you know, I, my audience is heavily limited based. You can uh, look up some bargain cubes online, uh, some, some common and uncommon cubes that only use cards that cost a quarter, you know, maybe 50 cents. You could literally buy an entire bargain cube that you look up somewhere else, submit the list. You can import lists into uh, um, Card Kingdom. You don't even have to go individually and click each card if you want. You can just build your cube, import it into Card Kingdom, click buy and a cube gets delivered to your door that you didn't even have to go and pull out all the cords for uh, card cords cards for you know uh i i think that's a like if you've ever considered dabbling in cubing i would challenge you as as a place to as that's being a place to start because the nice thing about starting with a, a real a real bargain or a real bargain cube is that you can build on it you can just start replacing it uh with cards that you want and and grow it from there and if you did that from my affiliate link in the panels down below at Card Kingdom, they would know you got there from here and the circle of promotional life would continue. But I really do thank you, Card Kingdom, for your support. And please check them out via my panel and we'll keep this stream rolling, right? Did you update, right? I don't know if you mean, uh, D. This doggy keeps following us. We've seen that in uh, several drafts. I'll get out of your way. You don't know what doggy yet. It's this doggy. And what else have we got? We got a banishing light for some hard removal. Uh, we have Archon. Often a two for one with a nice body behind, but not a first pick here over banishing light or even Gary or uh, uh, Kunaros. Banishing Light could be uh, the the grown-up pick over Kunaros because Kunaros is gold, but I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the rare pup, see what we can't do with him. With them. <laughs> it's, if there was any uh is there any any pup that you would uh, go with the them designation on, it might be Kunaros here. Hey, nice. Right into a Farika's spawn. We're going to grab that, but this is a, a tight pack. We've got Aspect, Lampad, and Soul Reaper that might wheel in the black. And uh, Revoke Existence or Sentinel's Eyes might come around. The green here is, both of these green cards are very strong. I like the Horn Beetle, I like the Wanderer, but we started with Kunaros, so let's go ahead and take this uh, Mythic Uncommon here that matches the color of our rare first pick. Well, what's jumping out at me now? Uh, I do want to keep down this direction if we can. I'm looking for things to pull me, but I don't see anything uh, in red, green, or blue that pulls me off of the black-white plan. We have a nice bleeper omen here. Uh, I think we'll take the catablepus and uh, look to wheel some of this stuff. Hopefully a omen or a flicker comes back. Bleep, bleep. Got excited when I saw a black card in the upper left corner because I thought it might mean a, a sweet black uncommon was still available. Well, uh, two out of three ain't bad, but this is merely a black uncommon. Sunmane Pegasus is fine. Fine to good. Piper fits the curve better, but Pegasus is a much better creature. So uh, I'm going to... Normally I like to lean towards a curve consideration when debating between picks. Um, but 
We tend to end up with a Sentinel's Eye, so I'm not going to prioritize that here. I'm just going to take the Pegasus. I think it's an excellent card. This this may be the card that's gone up for me the most. There's something about the 2-3 flyer for 4 that is very underwhelming when you see them. Uh, but the aura nature of the format and uh, has made it so that... Uh, this is no joke to aura up, and then uh, activating that ability can put a race out of reach. Leonin uh, fits in that. Just go with the small, go with the cheapest plan, or we could grab Omen as the more powerful card. Not by much, but if we do end up on a hero path, I love having some omens because uh, spitting out those tokens really matters if you're trying to target heroes in the format. Uh, but we could take the Leonin. I'm not exactly sure what the best one is. Since we don't have a two yet, I think I'm going to lean Leonin. We just have no two drops yet. I know we're only five picks in, but, uh, since we're, we're pretty high on our curve right now, I'm going to, uh, grab the Leonin. Witness is interesting. This is a very strong card to still be here. Mogus's favor might be good enough, though. Although uh, it's a no uh, escape is a non bow with uh, with the hound doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, the hound isn't always on the battlefield or even in your hand, and um, you can often get value out of it before you play it. Uh, unicorn, what? Oh, you're on uh, last pick, Uncle. Um, I I don't like that unicorn that much. I'll take it, but I, I it's not a priority for me. This witness being here is bothering me almost, but I think we're too deep. I think we're a little bit too late to pivot to witness given the availability of the favor. Um, well, it, if we're not married to white, we only have two picks. I'm not, I don't think we're, are we really abandoning Sun Main, Kunro, and Kunros uh, just because of witness? I mean, maybe. This is maybe not so powerful that we can't hedge to this. Um, but I am going to take favor. It's close. If you take uh, witness here, I don't blame you. Uh, hedging towards blue, this is somewhat of a signal, and obviously it's attracting my eye. But uh, both also taking a Mogus's favor here could potentially keep some bot downstream from locking into black by randomly picking this card while they already have black cards. Um, so I I hear what you're saying, Harry, but uh, I'm going to take... Uh, I don't think I'm drafting the easy way. I'm thinking it through hard <laughs> and that's just the conclusion i came to amulet is a consideration there too but i'm pretty down on amulet it seems relative to chat i gotta say uh I, and i like it i just think everybody seems all over the amulet all the time and i'm just like you know i'll, I'll take it when i'm hedging towards a maybe splash but i don't really prioritize it uh so now we have courser with the uh, heavy mana requirement on the three drop or the harpy with the light mana requirement but uh light toughness as well which is not great we are seeing some more good blue come around so those of you who went uh, with the blue pick last pick may be getting rewarded with uh, following this singer pick but i guess since we like uh spawn and bleepus the most we'll take harpy And pick eight. Still worth the flicker here. And Wayfarer could end up doing some stuff for us if we uh, get into the aura thing. Find us a black Eidolon and wow, Wanderer uh, pick 10 also says some things about green's availability here. I'm going to take it since there's nothing else, but we'll just stare at it. Uh, yeah, just some vault progress here. Nothing. Yeah, put this off. All right, we are maybe not in the right lane. Um, I'm not even sure the right lane is blue. It looks like green is wide open, but I, and maybe heck, maybe we've taken it enough to consider it. Nah, not really. And uh, we <laughs> green may be wide open, but I would like to take this pack and uh, move on to pack three. We'd get one, two, three, four five, six, seven fine playables for the deck. But we'll take the uh, rare removal spell. Do we have four of those? Yeah, we do. So this will be a uh, a gem pick as well. Yeah, four, four first pickable black cards right here. 
we'll see what wheels. Maybe uh, maybe we'll get some great news and like a, a somehow Timoret will come back or something. A rare we can't play versus some um, marginal. We can take uh, twenty gems there, but I'll take uh, if if you are a gem hungry player. If you are strapped, if you often run out of gems and are free to play, this is a clear enigmatic incarnation pick to me. Uh, you'd take 20 gems or the potential for 20 gems here with that pick because it's not th these aren't that great. Uh, but I, I've stopped doing that on this account because of our bankroll. So just a note to those of you who are um, budget tight on free to play, I would take the gems there. But... Uh, yeah, we're going to take one of three meh removals instead. I think we just go with Revoke. Yeah, I'm not sold on Orzov as the correct seat, but I am sold on it as where we're at. We're not we're not getting off of white black at this point. I you know, that both both of our colors are reasonably deep and good here. I mean, I get, I say that and now watch the magic gods try to get me off of the white, but here we go. Like we're going to take commanding presence and try and wheel Blessing, Wayfarer, Envoy, something like that. Uh, that's a good question. Uncle says, what if I don't have four of the card? Uh, I still think you should do it if you are expecting to uh, get to 4x of a, of a card. Like, if you play enough that you generally are building out to 4x of the rares, then you should. If you're not playing enough to... Uh, build out 4x of the rares, then uh, then you don't have to do... No, then then you're not, not going to get gems out of it. Uh, all right, so commanding presence here. Indomitable will over another harpy. We're probably going to wheel this harpy. Uh, again, the green is really flowing. If, if I have regrets in this draft, it's not figuring out the green was open, but I don't think we figured it out until it was uh, really too late to capitalize. Yeah, that, but that's why true. You got to know you got to know your own history and your own pace of play. Because if if you can say that, got to get to got to get to four x somehow. But if you know that time after time you just don't get to four x, then e even when you do rare draft, then then you're not getting gems in that spot. Uh, but if it, but if you are, then uh, it's worth it. And if you only play limited, of course, you can do the convert your wild cards into gems, which um, uh, who was asking about Unc uh, Uncle? Uh, do you know Uncle Funkle? Do you know? Do you know about the uh, crafting, leaving the draft to craft up to four X to turn wild cards into gems? Because if you only play limited, if you don't care about collection building, that's a, an important skill to know uh, as well. An important trick to know as well. I'm gonna go ahead and take Indomitable Will though here. Trying to get into the aura side of things, and on that front, we do have an, an aura here, but it's not the one I want. I sometimes I mistake this for the um, uh, inevitable end, which I think is quite reasonable. This is a little tougher to play, so yeah, I think we go ahead and take another wayfarer here and try to build towards uh, opening on wayfarers and curving out with a lot of enchantments. Uh, Havoc says, uh, I think it's harder to get rely on getting to 4x through draft with this every two weeks nonsense, which is a real problem, you know, which may be a strong cons factor into why Wizards is, has made this change. Pick six Archon of Falling Stars seems like where we want to be here. We've got a Bleepus, but we don't have a massive top end, so this Archon is here is fine. Yeah, Uncle, it's a it's a good trick if again you it's only for people who don't care about constructed. But if you're only on arena to draft, then you can uh, convert wild cards into gems. A required update is available. Your client will be disconnected in ten minutes, and you will need to update to the latest version of MPG Arena. Okay, well we're going to be taking a break from this draft to do that, but maybe we can uh, finish the draft first. Uh, we are not going to take a shield here. Um, in these types of decks, I do like to be heavy white. So we'll take the oppressively costed uh, white card, but it is an enchantment for Pious Wayfarer. And uh, we do want to, I mean, Bleepus says uh, black permanence, please. But 
We can cut the bleeper if, if we need to, and if we end up leaning heavy white, we're going to take that. Watch, Buckeye. You watch. Love Hero of the Pride here. Uh, we don't have any white omens yet, but um, getting Hero of the Pride and looking to pick some of those up could be good. Ooh, man. Late Hero of the Nyxborn kind of makes me uh, sad about that being wide open, but we'll take a rumbling sentry here. Yes, you're right. Shield uh, has some kind of role, but what I want to do to protect Orid creatures, Deacon Black, is get uh, White Blessing in, instead of uh, Shield. Uh, sure, Uncommon, something else. Third, Wayfarer. Really want to lean into uh, cheap curve-out enchantments now with three Wayfarers. Shatter the sky, well, kind of goes against uh, the the curve out aggro we're trying to do, but you uh, don't pass such a unique effect. Uh, this is often how many times on stream in the last couple of weeks have we joked just draw shatter of the sky when we're like trying to figure out how we can possibly win the game, right? So we're gonna take uh, shatter here, and I wonder if we're, yeah we're at four of those. Uh, a lot of good stuff. Want, would love to wheel one of these. Probably not the Pilgrim, but Hero or even Rise could wheel if uh, the bots aren't on that. Hey, I noticed Beetle and Wanderer side by side again. Are there are there pick orders uh, in Uncommons that we are not... I haven't heard anything, but I just note that in the same draft we have the same pair there. Take Shatter, though. You feel like Rise is better than Shatter? Uh, I hear you, but like this is such a unique effect. Like You just can't get this effect... It's 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 sometimes the only thing that can win you uh, bring you back from a game. Take a obvious final death here. Chimera jumps out at me, but what else have we got? I'll switch to this view. Uh, Underworld Charger, but not nah, Chimera is good. Staggering Insight, uh, one of my favorite cards in the set. But we'll take another two drop over a three drop or a splash. Um, Alucardio, they had, uh, well, it may be slightly knowable, but not fully knowable, which was the problem for a long time on Arena. Those of you who are a little bit newer to Arena don't know, but the uh, older formats were fully mappable. You could. Uh, you could look at a you could look at a pack that was missing an uncommon and know what was missing by simply looking up the uh, two uncommons that were still there. Uh, so Sentinel's Eyes here seems fine. Again, this minion's return not good enough, but I'm happy to pick up a Sentinel's Eyes for this deck. Wings of Hubris unlikely to make the cut, but I'll take it just in case over the Vault Progress uncommon. Uh, we could take an aspect over the remorse. I think the remorse is better, but we are trying to be aura-ish. But maybe not. Maybe we don't need to worry about that. Like, uh, if we have enchantment creatures, those work with the Wayfarer. And um, it's not like we have the uh, the one two two drop flyer yet or anything. So maybe we don't have... And we have Archon, I suppose. But it's not like we actually have a ton of... Aura synergies, so I guess we just take the remorse. I think we'll be happier with the remorse. Oh, commons and uncommons. Uh, that's why I talk about vault progress. Uh, you, uh, when you get a fifth copy of a common or uncommon, it uh, inches you towards getting some extra wild cards. So if you have nothing else in the, if you have nothing in the pack to take for playability, and there's an uncommon, you always take that over commons. That's the only rule there. But I am going to take agonizing remorse. I think it's uh, it's going to be a happier play than the other. And I'm going to liking omen here over uh, cling or aspect. We keep passing aspects, but I think that's okay. I think we would rather be able to dig back up a hound or whatever than. Um, then aspect something.
New bands. Oh, I didn't know there was new bands. Somebody tell me what there's new bands in standard or new bands in what? Wow, look at this, folks. Oh my gosh, did we miss the green train or what? Holy moly. But happy to get a hero here at least. Got our fourth Wayfarer, but I don't know if we have the uh, actual enchantment creature count to really be happy about a fourth Wayfarer to the point where maybe we want actually a Nyxborn Marauder to actually trigger the three that we have and maybe give something to the bleeper. Yeah, green green was wide, but I I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at the draft to see if we missed some kind of signal in the in the first pack, but I didn't really notice the openness of green until it was clearly too late to really take advantage of it. Um but yeah, that's where I'm at on like trying to figure out if Marauder belongs in the deck actually. Let's let's take a look at how we're triggering the three wayfarers we have. Okay, we have eyes, favor, omen. This is not. Um, b -b Flicker, Will. Horser. Presence. Yeah, look at how... Uh, this is it, folks. Yeah, this is actually a fairly... We, we kind of missed on the synergy here. We, we got the payoffs without the enablers, so I do think we have to take a, Nick, a Nyxborn Marauder here uh, definitely over a Pious Wayfarer because it adds, because we can put it in this pile, right? At least it triggers that stuff. Uh, take the uncommon for vault progress. Yeah, Flicker does uh, manage to ETB an enchantment and at instant speed as well. All right, well, not loving this deck. We'll see what y'all think of the par pole, but we clearly missed the open seat of green, possibly green-blue. I wonder what green-blue would have looked like there, but I think green-black could have been good, even green-white. But clearly, uh, the bots had no interest in green that draft, and if we had found our way there, we'd be a little happier, but let's make this work. I'm going to note the 60 on the grind here before I forget that. And This other info as well. All right, deck, what do you got? We have uh, seventeen eleven. Need to can, can cut a couple of uh, each on that front. Man, we didn't end up with any white omens either, so these heroes aren't really doing the work I would like. Yeah, we'll see. It's going to be a stretch, but I think we cut a sentry as not really doing what we want. And maybe even one Leonin. Maybe even one Wayfarer. Do we have enough going on? I almost feel like, though, if, it, if we should take one out, should we cut them all? Like, shouldn't we all three? Should we, should we play all three or none if we don't like what the interactions are here? We counted around seven, I think. Seven plus a flicker. But maybe you have to cut the flicker, though. What are we happily flickering here? What's our ETB that we're like, yeah, I, we're happy to flicker Bleeper. Uh, flickering Archon doesn't do anything. This does something very slight. Flicker unlocks stuff from enchantment removal, which is nice. Um, but I think we cut a flicker. I think we cut the flicker. Well, if we take the Wayfarers out... Then we're a little short on creatures, but there you go. We can make those the, <laughs> the final three cuts. Right, Trip? We just missed. It's like, ah, 
We had the, the, and we had four. We had access to four Wayfarers. We just did not get the density of enchantments. Um, if we, I still think this is too, maybe we need to take out a remorse as well. And bring back in a sentry. That ups the creature count back to uh, 14. 14.9 with an omen isn't the worst. Well, uh, Sentry is playable. I don't know if it, it's good, but if we cut the Wayfarers, we need playables, right? So then that's what I would do. It's uh, Okay, uh, well, we're going to uh, log out now. But see, I did it, Buckeye. And this is where we were at before we restarted. Most people want to cut them. One person wants to run all three, but there are there is some support for just running a couple. Magic Craig doesn't like them over Leonin, I assume, of the Lost Pride here. Um, I'm I'm a pretty big fan of the Leona of the Lost Pride relative to how uh the classic common three one for one and a white generally plays in limited. Um usually these cards are not that great because they're traded for easily, especially in formats with a lot of one one tokens. But the power of trading off with a green chimera or uh name your low down low toughness escape creature and and eliminate the escape clause is quite valuable to me so all right i'm gonna go with the zero vote it makes it pretty easy because then this kind of becomes our deck <laughs> there's not there's not much else to do unless you want to lower our creature count under 14 to play a flicker or a remorse and i don't think we do that um even though remorse is solid Remorse is the only thing I might be remorseful for not finding a home for here. And I'll keep that in mind as we uh, move on to the games and maybe we come back. Um, since we cut all the pious wayfarers, um, what's the opposite of being pious? If you're not pious, you are what? Because um, that's what we are now. Uh, and let's get lands. Why you help me with the... Uh, yeah, heretical. I like it. Um, and wayfarers travel a lot. So what's the opposite of travel? Heretical home homebody. Heretical hermit. That's better. Let's do heretical hermit. Has a better ring. Ethan's good too. Heretical's nice though. Heretical Hermit. Good. It's got the it's got the uh, triple letter alliteration. Yeah, so I'm kind of hermiting right now. Uh and let's see, we uh I had uh Tron and Timnos on choices. Did I did you guys make them? No, I just, th this is, I I'm not sure how this ended up at our, as our box art, actually. I thought it would be default to our first pick, unless I dragged it there or something. Uh, yeah, you get to pick Tron, and uh, Tim Nose, I believe, said uh, something, what was it? Something Zendikari, right. So let's see what we've got on that front. I don't know if there's Zendikar lands. I think so. Maybe not. That's a little Zen. Dominaria looks Zendikari. Second land. Oh, yeah, thank you. Sorry. There we go. Good call. <sighs> Gee, I wish I had some tools for managing my lands. All right. We got our lands in. 
And I think I like nine, eight. We have Marauder, we have Harpy. Could go 10, seven. We're not looking to do this. We, this might happen early, but we're generally not looking to do these early. Harpy and Pound are nice on three though. And Marauder with double black and Bleepus with double black. Gosh, Bleepus is not good in this deck, by the way. We are very much, not great, I should say. Bleepus tends to be fine. You need one other pip and you can kill something, right? And and its floor is pretty darn good, even at minus two, minus two. Um, but just noting that it's not at its best here. And Tron wants a final death in the art. Oh, what would I take out for remorse? Would I go down on creature count or would we pull a different spell? I think I want the Indomitable Will because we don't have much to trigger the heroes. An instant speed hero trigger is nice there. Uh, yeah, it's really tough to find a, the cut. I, I guess I would cut the sentry and just go with uh, fewer creatures. All right. Yeah, and with no real, no no uh, removal auras, this is kind of sad too, but maybe we get a commanding presence back or something. Anyway, let's see how it plays. I was looking at Revoke GRS. Uh, they they do similar stuff, right? It's like the narrow answer card. But yeah, I, I think that, that was on my short list. Basically, either the sentry, if we cut a creature, or the uh, Revoke for a spell. Not a fantastic start, but we do have a Mogus's Favor, so if they drop a one toughness creature, we can answer that. And if we find any of our white creatures, we're going to be able to get a Chimera out at least on four, so I'm going to keep this. Let's see, we got, don't have any white, white, or black, black spells, so how we open on mana doesn't matter too much. All right, now at least we're in the worst case scenario of having a, uh, a play on four, and and we're in the spot where Oppo isn't really doing much. Yeah, I don't think anybody claims sleeves, but uh, we can we can adjust that as well. Interesting. Well, I was all set to just uh, pop off the Leonin, but we could just drop Puneros instead. Yeah, let's do that. Make him have an answer. And then next turn, we can uh, Chimera or Sunmane Pegasus, and then next turn, Chimera Sentinels, that kind of thing. I should have played another Planes, actually. If we're going to uh, get a bunch of one kind of land out, we want Planes here. Well, let's see if they've got anything for our doggy. If they do, that means at least Mogus's favor. Well, actually, never mind. As you say, it means we can have access to Mogus's favor again, but we're going to use Mogus's favor on the Lost Pride, and then that's going to um, the Lost Pride is going to take away the favor anyway. So they did have something for our doggy. That's all right. I like this card a lot, but it, like it's actually not a crushing blow to have it. You know, it's just part of our curve out, and uh, it's fine. Now though, given. We can go favor. We could go favor hero, Sentinel's Eyes on hero, just to get the white pip count up, but I don't think that's worth it. I'm worried about doing something like running a Pegasus out instead of favoring, because if they do have an aura and they want to put it on the Lost Pride, we lose our ability to kill it with this. So I am going to favor this turn. I'm going to start there. And then I guess all there is to do is play the hero, but I don't want a Sentinel's Eyes main phase on a summoning sick hero of the pride, so we're gonna be patient on that front. Yeah, 
yeah, I like using all your mana makes some sense, but Sentinel's Eyes onto Hero with other active creatures is quite good. Like, I want to run this out almost, you know, let's, let's get Pegasus, Daybreak, you know, let's get everything running out here. Although, in this case, hard to argue with uh, just Pegasus, Sentinel's Eyes. But again, I think I'm going to wait. Like, I'm just going to do Chimera now. And then uh, next turn, we can get Pegasus and Sentinel's Eyes on Chimera. Because Pegasus has uh, lifelink on its own. Sentinel's Eyes gives lifelink. Let's, that's not lifelink, sorry, vigilance. Pegasus has activated vigilance and Sentinel's Eyes gives it. So I want to put it on um, uh, the big flyer. So with that, we're going to go Chimera now. And then um, Pegasus Eyes next turn. Possibly Archon next turn if we draw a land and just and the situation in the air changes or something. Yeah, sorry, let me get the right scene. All right, well, we did get a sixth land. But by it doesn't change anything because we actually do want well maybe we want Sentinel's Eyes on the Pegasus instead we have to consider that we could offer Chimera for their Pegasus then drop ours at, or drop Archon you know <laughs> we could actually I think I'll start with that I'm gonna um, I'm gonna send in with Daybreak Chimera and if they want to tra trade it for the Sun Main we can well here, so yeah we can we can just do Eyes on Chimera and Sun Main. That's that's one play to do here. And if this becomes a 4-4 Vigilant, it does successfully attack through this. The line I'm considering, though, is offering up Chimera first for the Pegasus. If they, uh, if they take that trade, because they double block and take the trade, it clears out their bigger flyer. Oh, sorry, we're down to a uh, low count. All right, I'm just going to do the uh, the play I intended then. I was out of, I had no hourglasses and just had to decide if I were um, not streaming or playing on Magic Online. It would have given that a little more thought because I think there was an argument to go Archon here, offer a trade, clear the sky out a little bit if they take the trade, uh, and drop an Archon that we throw uh, Sentinel's Eyes on and have a 5-5, five five, you know, have a Lyra instead of a Sarah Angel. Well, that's a little exaggeration. I'm a magic player. I get hyperbole, right? Still don't have blocks. Maybe they're going to throw uh, that minus three, minus three on the Chimera just to reduce it so that it can attack. But then we can follow with an Archon that can. Yeah, we did not get the uh, sweet black removal beyond a uh, final death. Nothing to get with the Archon yet, should it get plucked out of the sky, but we're going to play it just as a 4-4 flyer. All right, the coffee, she is gone. Oh yeah, Intervention. I forgot that rare removal. I was only thinking about the classic common removals and, and uncommon removals in the set that we might have drafted. Yeah, they're going for the weakening of the Chimera. Strengthening of the Pegasus. All right. 
now we're uh, deadlocked again, but we can just send in with the Chimera because it gives us the, it'll give us the eyes back and we can put that on the Archon for successful attacks again. So we'll start with the Chimera attack. And not, not the fastest clock ever, but <clears throat> we'll keep plinking away for one. If we find any removal for the Pegasus, we kind of come close to winning on one swing. Not exactly, but close. Pretty Daxos. Yeah, that's true. We could do a Eyes on Hero for a one-time uh, pump everything for a turn that would probably enable an Alpha if we do get rid of that Pegasus. Mm, good point. I wasn't really playing uh, about with my own Shatter in mind. Um, but given that we do have avenues to win with a hero trigger and going wide. It is somewhat of a peak point of tension here. Plink, plink, plink. Second black source could unlock some spells for Oppo. Um, even spread of lands over there makes it hard to know exactly what they're up to. Looks like blue is the splash, which kind of suggests Trawler to me, honestly. Seeing the white-black deck with an altar of the Pantheon and uh, two random islands that don't seem to have anything to do with anything. I think they're a little much, Mama. I'm glad you like them, but I looked at those unsanctioned lands and it's like, this is the everything bagel of magic lands. Well, so now they're letting us get the eyes back if we want it. Maybe they have means to get rid of it, but eyes on the pride could be one of our outs. Um, I guess we could also just double block if we're going to block and try and trade for it. Uh, you know, actually kill the thing. Uh, it reduces our ability to go wide and get around them for some kind of hero based alpha but we're already at a 4-4 tie now so it's not like we're getting wide around them anytime soon so i'm gonna do this yeah let me make, let me make this offer and I guess I'm actually going to get rid of the Lagana Band Storyteller so they don't raise dead the Storyteller to get the Myers Grasp back. I mean, I know there's ways to get it back 
the Myers grass back without that sequence, but that's what I went with. And oh deck, give us something. Give us something besides some more land. I better go ahead and put this Sentinel's eyes, uh, or Oppo is gonna start having the attacks. because creatures are still like the most valuable resource in graveyards between Timoret gaining life off them between all the variety of ways to bring creatures back like just getting like I, I wanted to get rid of a creature and in, in terms of deciding which one well let's get rid of the creature that also gets something else sorry wasting rope Specifically, Rise of the Eldrazi. If we're, it's the plain Zendikar, but the set Rise of the Eldrazi. See me not touching my face with my fleshy fingers. This is turning into a grind. Kind of one removal spell away from getting back to it here, but. Can't find it. We have we have two that we're looking for uh, to get rid of that sun main with uh, final death and yeah, because Bleepus won't get it done. We have Catableepus, but right now it can only kill the uh, envoy. Commanding presence gives us uh, the means to attack. So commanding presence is an out to change the board state to our favor. Oppo really calling, calling it here. They have not been making this attack so far. I'm worried they have Mogus's favor and are now starting to try and attack, uh, to try and get us to block to do, to do the favor. It makes me nervous. I'm not sure we can afford to play around that, but I think we can afford to play around it for a turn at least. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it for now, see if we can find some removal, make this a little easier. I hear you, but it's too risky. I, our whole game plan falls apart <clears throat> if they uh, if they actually have the favor there. And by being patient and waiting for some removal, it works out. I'm not sure how long we could have waited, but it worked out. Um, <coughs> yeah, let's. We should go over the blowout, I suppose. Uh, I'll be surprised if they fall for it. But it'll also maybe if they just block with the sun. I mean, it's not going to matter now. But if they, the, oh, here's. A, I didn't think this. Yeah, I guess we couldn't. We couldn't risk it at the time. But like, this will actually tell us a lot. Oh yeah, it's actually more life gainy to uh to not do it that way. But it does give us the chance of getting uh envoy dead. So Oh, doubles only on exile. Yeah, that's the, the double is only on exile. Good call. So that's not the case anyway. Uh I'm going to not let him go get shields up. And we're gonna find one, two, three, four, five. Well, six. Six is the number. That's fair, Stephen. 
If they had Mogus's favor, they probably put it on their own Pegasus. But maybe they're next level. And that's how they're going to get me to uh, block. Well, they got their Pegasus back. And they got the eyes on it. So we're back to zero. Darn it. What a grind. This game is not all that fun, really. Because now we're just kind of waiting. Maybe I'm just saying it's not fun because Oppo disrupted my play. It's not fun when Oppo stops me from executing the strategy I wanted to deploy to win the game. If we draw Shatter, uh, I think we wait. If we draw Commanding Presence, I think we play it on our Sun Main Pegasus and throw our heads back and cackle. Ha 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 ha! This game is fun again. Did I say this game was boring or not good? Suddenly this game is great again. I don't know why. I am human after all. Hey, Fool Auto, welcome. Oppo playing the land there is interesting. It just makes me... I mean, maybe they have card draw or something, but uh, I'm happy about that. I'm still waiting for the Trawler, though. I feel like they have 19 cards in Library and a 1 in 19 chance of drawing Trawler. Like, why? We've seen literal zero other blue cards, folks, in an altar. Like, this screams someone who shoehorned a pack three, pick one uh, Trawler into their deck. Splashyok, that's fair. Ashyok would make a little more sense in terms of being a uh, a more reasonable splash, but people will do anything to get a trawler in their deck. Yeah, right now we're ahead of trawler. Greetings, Nantuko. Oh, Mama, so close. All right, let's see how they scry. We want to see bottom, bottom. Anything top makes me is... All right, bottom, bottom is good. Now we're trying to fade the trawler. Fade the trawler. And they keep coming up with uh, life gain and chumps. But as has been pointed out, we're not even, we can, right now we can fade the trawler even if they find it, but let's just not even have to fight that. <laughs> let's. We should activate. Yeah, Ashiok, you're right, is, uh, would be a better draw for Oppo right now than trawler. Yeah, that's an, an interesting observation, Chunk. They might not be thinking about it, but uh, they're a high enough rated player that that's probably something they are considering. We don't have any card draw really reasons to play a land and represent anything. Uh, so I'm going to keep pretending. <laughs> well, they got a ton of removal working out for them here. And we're back to square one.
that really crippled our ability to come back from this. I'm not sure. Like, now we need to 18 to 17. Like, we need to somehow get an air defense and live on uh, library. Oh, yeah, you're, I'm playing lands like I don't have a, a, a Wrath of God. Sorry. Uh, you're right. I should hold that. I'll, I'll remember now. I think playing that was a mistake. It didn't do anything about the air. Although uh, they do have ground attacks starting, so maybe it wasn't. I should have thought about it. Uh, the, again, again, the mistake being I'm not thinking about the shatter, but I think having thought through the shatter now, I still would play this because we want to represent the ability to trade for their ground attacks. And if we just left a 2-2 two -two and a 1-1, one -one, um, we're actually susceptible to big ground attacks too. Sounds like it, Buckeye. Some people are having some issues. Uh, we've been okay so far, but uh, you're not the first person to report troubles. I'm kind of holding on to the eyes because I think we're going to need it for um, another flyer. Like, well, I mean, like we have a harpy. We have uh, our own Omen of the Dead. So my feeling is that the Sun Maiden is going to be the, the game ender here unless we find a final death for it and or uh, get our omen to get back a flyer so that we can block it. And once we get there, I want the Sentinel's Eyes up there. Although I suppose the Sentinel's Eyes going back to the yard doesn't really matter. Um, if we trade off, it goes, it dies and we can put it back on that flyer anyway. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I, I was uh, misunderstanding what you were saying, but um, that's a good good point. Nantugo is saying uh, if we draw the if we draw the shatter, we we throw the aura on something on the Leonin to make it four power, and then we'll draw a card. Um, play it now, or we lose it anyway. Why is there something? Oh, because of the Leonin the Lost Pride. We don't have to block it. Is that what you're thinking? I was going to hold. Yeah, I think we just don't block it and then we don't have to, then we can save it. I still want to save it. Although, if we, yeah. I'll do it for, I want to say hold for a turn though. Let's see what they get off of this scry. Bottom, bottom. Well, we're probably losing this one. We don't really have inevitability. We have, <laughs> we have, we have an omen is like our best draw. Uh, I wonder if we go uh, if we go hero and then uh, they're at twenty. Yeah, this is getting out of hand, way out of hand. But if whatever they're splashing for is killable by uh, shatter, that works as well. I think we just have to play to the shatter at this point. They're blasting Insane Clown Posse. I could start blasting fish and we can have the battle of the uh, misunderstood bands. Deck sizes are uh, 14 to 15, so we've got a slight lead there. Good, more swamps. I was hoping for more swamps. 
12, 13, 14. What are we doing? So we got three lands left in 14 cards. So we should be pretty live to draw gasoline from here, but still got three lands left. Well, if we bleep the Leonin, we'd have to put the Sentinel's Eyes out first. We could. Uh, we could also hold this for potential post-Wrath. Uh, this is game one still. Quite the, quite the epic battle. So yeah, I think we hold and try to have a big post-Wrath turn. I think that we can't really win this game unless we find Shatter. So this is really simply an, a matter of finding and resolving Shatter and hoping it's enough. I'm, I'm some, uh, let's see, I, I should count, like my, my thing is with 13 land, Shatter leaves us with nine. I want to be able to like, dump our hand after a shatter. I want to be able to shatter and, and dump the hand, which is why I'm keen on playing some lands, but we can hold now, uh, I suppose, uh, because we're just down to the last one anyway. If we, get sh if we draw a shatter, we can drop the swamp and have, have maximum mana as it is. I'd rather not play around Lamprey and rather play towards maxing out our plays after a shatter. I mean, it's funny, I mean, that barely matters. Is that the only splash? Well, we, we see something on the blue front. I've splashed for, for just that card. There's one of our lands. So now at 14, we get uh, 10 mana left over. Let's see, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. See, if we play one more, we can like play it all. Or we need even more for the Sentinel's Eyes. Um, yeah, it speeds up their decking, but we're starting to lose control here. I think we just play lands out because we want to... Aspect isn't even the thing that matters. It's just whether or not we find Shatter in time and what we can do afterwards. And maybe I am supposed to put Sentinel's Eyes on the Leonin uh, pre-Shatter so that when we do Shatter, uh, we don't have to spend that mana that turn. Ah, that's another... That's why the splash was so heavy, the quote splash. Sure, deck, just deliver all of the, all the lands. Now we're done with lands, right? Do we have, I guess we have one? One land left, everybody, one land. Are we just dead yet? We might have to play some creatures or we might be just dead. Let's see, we still have uh, blocks on the ground. Yeah, I think we need to bleep or we just risk losing to go wide. And um, yeah, I'm gonna eyes onto the Leonin so that if we draw our, well, actually we want like this. So if we draw our shatter, we have a four power creature ready. Yeah, it almost doesn't even matter, like, um, getting the Kraken, getting the Leonin, it, it, it's just, we're just trying to, again, we're just trying to find the Shatter.
I would take the Archon if I were them. That's the thing I'm hoping to get back with their Omen. Yep. All right, here we go, deck. Let's make it interesting and top us the Shatter, please. This is being double streamed. It'd be fun for both audiences. Mm, only concern is if that leaves us dead, 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 dead. Which it does, because they had double removal. Darn it. Oh, but they're not attacking. Didn't they just have us to rights? Maybe not. I guess we had uh, block, block, live. Okay. One more draw. Come on, magic gods. It'll be fun, right? Fun? Darn it. <sighs> Would have been fun. Well, someone go tell Blade Fury that we were looking for our Shatter the Sky to make things interesting, but we did not get there. So we're going to give him credit for figuring out to attack us and move on with our lives. Good game, Blade Fury. We had no means to win there with them at 48. Oppo's deck looked pretty greedy. Uh, the game went long enough where the greed paid off because, of course, once the game goes super long, you get all your splash colors and you just get all that power. But uh, I don't know about that sp splash. High risk, high gain. That kind of splash leaves you uh, looking at your mulligan in your hand that you can't cast as you're getting run over by a Boros deck sometimes, but... In a long grind, it's going to pay off like it did for Oppo there. Mama gets her sleeves. Oh, this is a better interface. Does that mean I have a... Oh, it's not only a better interface, they get the, they're doing the very smart game design thing, which is tease the people with the stuff they don't have. Look at all the sleeves you failed to get, Ryan. And if uh, when we were designing these uh, types of cosmetics, it was like, I, yeah, you should show us how you get it, too. Like, I would like a rollover that says how I can unlock the, oh, and it's like how I can unlock the sleeve. Um, anyway, we'll go and get, where's the rat? There's the rat. Oh, and look, we can make it default. Okay. Does that mean we get to uh let's go let's go play around. Maybe we can uh default I want to explore default lands here. Let's check it out. Is there? No. I don't see default lands. Maybe somebody can check the uh, the build notes and see if that's supposed to be in there or not. But we're going to get back to playing. All right. Starting in the loser's bracket, but we've had some good success from uh, from behind before. Oh, that can't be bought in the store aren't shown. That's fair, Deacon. So you, you do know where you can get them. Yeah, maybe it would be cruel to tease people with sleeves they couldn't even acquire in their UI. Up against a superb owl. And... A fine hand for it. Um, <clears throat> play a 
one, one for one somehow. I think the capitalization makes it pretty clear that they're an owl, not a football fan. That's the joke. Hey, a Blade Fury, good game. Thanks for the raid. Welcome. Kept killing my stuff. Why'd you have to kill all my cool stuff, man? And why'd you have to kill me before I found my, found my Shatter the Sky? Killing all my stuff. Uh, we'll drop a Leonin. Then if they can make the Horn Beetle bigger, we at least still have a trade. <clears throat> Let's see, if we send the Leonin, we can leave the hero back. If they then make the beetle bigger, we have to take something from the beetle, but that's okay. I think we gotta be aggro here. So I'm gonna drop the land, send in the three power. I doubt they'll trade. Beetle is too good to trade there, but we do have hero. And we could Mogus' favor our own hero to have to be sure to be able to block, but I don't like that. Let's, uh, if they play something like a green Chimera, we can use the favor on that. And Freak of Spawn is a great card, but at least it doesn't pump the beetle. Interesting. So we didn't find a land. We have Sentinel's Eyes in favor and Omens. We, <laughs> Even though we did not find our fourth land, somehow we could three spell this turn if we wanted. Uh, but I don't see a particular reason to. We could try to do something to get the spawn dead. If we drop the Sentinel's Eyes on the hero, we get a 4-3 uh, that does threaten to trade with it. And uh, Leona the Lost Pride, if we... We could put Sentinel's Eyes on that. And then if they trade with the spawn, we at least get to exile it. So I think I like putting it on the Leon and the Lost Pride. We don't mind a trade there. Uh, and the, we wouldn't mind a trade for the beetle either. Although it kind of we do, right? We don't want to trade this for the Leon and the Lost Pride. But I think I do like getting up to something that can uh, mess with the spawn. Huh, sleeves didn't stick. Good good observation, Mom. I don't know what that's about. We'll try and fix that. Well, maybe I said discard changes and it didn't uh, keep them. Huh, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll fix that later. So I'm just gonna say no attacks though. We're gonna, oops, sorry, no attacks. And we can, if, if we find ourselves a land, we can commanding presence the Leonin and then we're in business. If it survives, we're, we're somewhat getting uh, all in here. It looks like Oppo is as well. They still don't really have an attack or we can trade Leonin off. All right, land us one time, baby. Not what we're looking for. Could go Mogus' favor and make a 6-1. <laughs> that kind of demands answering, but again, they'll just throw the Horn Beetle in front of it at that point. Really frustrating that we can't find one more land here because the commanding presence on Leonin would do a ton of work. And as it is, almost want to favor the hero and go. Um, leave the Leonin back. They're not going to play anything for this favor anytime soon. And it gives us, another, it gives us an attack here. I'm going to do it. Because I'll trade this for either one, and we'll still leave the Leonin back uh, to threaten to trade with the spawn or the beetle. And this is a pretty hefty attack. 
to just ignore from oppo and if they don't ignore we also have the option to omen it back in the case of a trade Wow, now even a land for the Commanding Presence produces something blockable by Oppo. No worries, we're not going to find land again ever anyway. Uh, now maybe with the Beetle about to get big and with life totals at 12 to 20, we put him to the test with a full attack here. It exposes a 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 point crack back, but then we uh, we would win. So since both of these trade with all of their creatures and we have the omen, uh, I think we, and, and the life lead, we go for the all attack here. That's a good result for us. Because we can uh, Omen right now, bring the Leonin back, and then have Sentinel's Eyes on the hero next turn for a hero-based attack pump. Well, that's true. I can't get the eyes back currently. I guess we get a land, though. We still get the attack. We get the pump, the, the presence pump. In my head, eyes are so easy to bring back, you don't even need to think about it. You, you can always recast the eyes, right, Hajj? That can't block, so it doesn't change what we're threatening to do this turn. We did find our land, and that's good, because now uh, we basically get to Commanding Presence, and if they want to take out the Commanding Presence, they have to double block, and... Um, and then we get to choose to take out the spawn. The Leonin dies when we kill the spawn, at least. If we go on the Hero of the Pride, the Leonin gets up to four power, but can still be eaten by the beetle. And uh, so maybe we just presence... Yeah, we can't really attack with both because they do just get to eat. Whichever one we don't pump, they get to eat with the Horn Beetle. So we could also just uh, play Marauder and... Hey, SMT. Yeah, uh, we can play the Marauder and try to set up for a better attack uh, next turn. Like, and maybe we can get the final death that uh, helps clear the way as well. I think we need to... Since we don't have a clean attack with both creatures here... We should just go uh, a little more patient, play the Marauder, and try to get wide enough to get around this. Definitely an awkward time to feel like you might be getting sick, but, I mean, that's the point of this thing. Uh, most of us are going to get it, right? Uh, we're at 20. We're just going to take this. Hound is interesting. We play the Hound and keep building out wide. Uh, now, if we go Commanding Presence, what happens? Commanding Presence uh, on here. Hmm. I am going to keep building our board with creatures. I think eventually we can get it, like, we'll find a land for Final Death, and then Final Death into Commanding Presence should get us there, I think, I hope. As I recall, this doesn't do too much. Yeah, cheapens creature spells and they can uh, start paying to dig for action. 
Oh my goodness, deck, can you help us out, please? I mean, we can play this, and it kind of does what we're talking about. Um, I'm gonna, uh, uh, they played a creature that doesn't count as a creature yet. I'm just gonna play ours, and we'll keep trying to get wide. Uh, people have gotten, have tested for it after recovering, so you can get it again. That's the current information, I think. <laughs> now do we have it? Let's see, if we go Hero of the Pride, if we, I mean, if we hit Hero of the Pride, we get a five, uh, uh, I mean, he's huge. And then we get a four, five, four, four. They block the huge one. We only get through for four. Yeah, so we're still not there on it. Uh, I'm going to play another creature. Okay. Uh-oh. Now are we just dead? What a sudden turn. But look, we get... Final death on the Horn Beetle, and that should uh, make a lethal attack. Um, I didn't wait, but we have, they can't block here, and we, we should have enough, right? Uh, our three smallest, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, is lethal. Yeah, Repeal would save them, that's true. Let's see if they've got it. But they're out of cards, right? All right, finally found our fifth land, 27 turns into the game, and it was enough to win. Yeah, I played Nylea once, and then I was like, wow, this card's just not good. <laughs> Like, this card is too clunky. You want those gods to be great, but unless you're going to reliably turn Nylea into a creature, she doesn't do that much effectively. Oh, sorry, Mama. Trying. Sorry, Mama. Here, this is this is your rat sleeve for the for the game. Some say I never heard of you. A rat burglar. All right, with uh, Shatter in the opener, we'll keep this and try and rope-a-dope our opponent. Do we play the hero of the pride is one question. You don't want to be too obvious that you're just sandbagging a Shatter. Mama can you can have a sale as well. Free sale for Mama. If I can find it. Hold on. There it is. Come sail away. Come sail away. Come sail away with me, lad. With Oppo playing out a Karyatid on two, they're looking to accelerate out their hand. So I'm going to let them and then try to shatter them. Ha Haj, I'm waiting because eh, I'll play the hero next turn and it's fine, right? Like, I'm not, uh... We'll see what they do here. Oh, 
Uh, but I like a hero here. I mean, we could we could play this, but it's uh, it dot you know it doesn't like I almost feel like we just not do anything again. <clears throat> yeah, Shatter will work on Daxos. Yeah, I'm gonna wait, and I'll go into full control so it looks like uh, we have something to do on their turn. Or actually, I'll do what uh, was suggested, and I'll put stops on all of Oppo's turn so that. Uh, Hopefully they think the reason why we haven't done anything here is that we have an instant for their turn. But you're going to get partial credit for your sleeves because we'll get them on eventually here, Mama. Yeah, I'm trying to represent White Omen, basically. Oh, it looks like combat wasn't... Uh... Good there. And so, yeah, now we can just shatter and we get a nice three and a half for one, depending on how you value the Sentinel's eyes. Three point something. Uh, and with no four power, they don't even draw a card. I don't know. I think uh, eyes is a little more than that fraction of a card in Antuco. Bleeper gets to just take this thing out uh, right away if eyes doesn't hit it. Uh, if if it wears eyes, we need to find something else first. But speaking of eyes, we are going to Pegasus. Oops, sorry, Pegasus eyes and uh, and do it now. I want to see them do something not izing the uh, favored. That's good. Although too bad I did run the eyes out because uh, if I'd known they were going to drop an Archon of their own, we could have saved it for our Archon, but we'll get it eventually. And for now, I like uh, just... Well, I'm going to attack. I guess if they uh, if they want to block the Pegasus, I like uh, bleeping the Archon. What They have... Uh, they can get Daxos... Or is it Aura? Enchantment cards. They get Daxos back if we kill the Archon. Um, the Favored, you mean? Leaping the, the, the Favored of Aroas? Well, we can race the Archon, I guess with our own Archon, but... Um, all right. Yeah, certainly let's, uh, okay, I'll, I'll get rid of the favored here. The eye, because the eyes are going to make it so that the Bleepus doesn't get it. And we kind of needed to do that. It looked, yeah, there's no question that we we're going to bleep. The question is, do we attack? See if they want to block with the Archon and bleep the Archon instead of the favored. That was what I was considering. But I like getting something while we could get something. And Archon has value for them as well, anyway. I don't know. Uh, it's not... I don't think it's fancy play. It's like, it, it's the specifically, hey, we have a 4-4 flyer. They're going to have potentially this 5-5 flyer. Uh, if we can kill the big flyer, our big flyer goes unimpeded. That's not fancy play. That's saying big flyers win games. Maybe we should try to make one and keep them from having one, right? Uh, here. Rough. Try to find some removal. There we go. Revoke. We can exile their Sentinel's Eyes, and then... Uh, that could start to help. I guess we could also revoke the glory bearers. Can we get anything back with our Archon? We can't get anything back with Archon right now. 
But yeah, we probably play it as a place to start and then uh, see what we want to do about things um, next turn. And yeah, see if they want to offer, if they want to attack in. I mean, they're top decking, so it's likely that a double block produces the result we would want. Well, I know what we are revoking now. Although, might want to try and... If the Archon dies, they're going to get one... Oh no, we revoke it, so then it goes away for good. So that's fine. Spawn. So got to get our Archon back. Get our defense back in the air. And then uh, I like the spawn here. Definitely start getting pretty frisky with the spawn. I think this is one of the cards we were considering for uh, the agonizing remorse and so just making note of that uh, we can play sentry and hero if we want to here um i think we do there's no need to suicide the spawn right now because we can't get it back so i'm just gonna drop the sentry and see what the top holds yeah and they can also just bounce so it doesn't matter anyway Good scry though, we get to get rid of a land. Uh, yeah, I'll play the hero too. We've used our shatter, we can't get it back, and going wide with a hero trigger might be one of the ways we can actually get him from 23 reasonably. If we find final death, or our rare removal spell, then it all comes up for us. As it is, still don't quite have reasons to attack, but I am not gonna, we could sandbag in case they have shatter as well. But I, again, I think one of, our, one of our means to victory here is to get wider than they are and find a hero trigger. Uh, moving eyes to Archon doesn't still doesn't give us an attack like we would lose the pegasus then we'd lose the archon and then we'd kind of be back where we were um holding a card first what do you mean holding a card first for what spawn if they want to it just lets them bounce it if they want and we d we don't have enough in uh, fodder in the yard to uh escape But I think if we just find our removal, find one of our removal spells, we kind of win on the spot. So I'm playing a little bit to that. Although uh, that puts us on a potential clock here. Although, let's see what they do with it. Yeah, net, the drawing of the wings puts a little pressure on because they get a one shot unblock now. Wings course gives stuff flying but once uh once per <laughs> once you can make something unblockable so see what they want to do now they still don't have an attack though which is what i figured oh land not what we wanted so now Let's see what if we if they blocked our two biggest four and a three we get one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 
11, 12, 13. 13 damage gets through no matter what, dropping them to 10. Uh, but they eat too much stuff. And then we just lose our Archon and we lose, and we are, we probably lose our Archon and bounce our Pegasus. We go to 10 life, so we're not dead on the crackback, but it's pretty rough. Still, they could be at uh, 10 life with us having um, Yeah, but yeah, the 13, 13 into 7 isn't quite enough, though, as War Furnace is pointing out. So I'm going to say no attacks. I'm going to hold out hope. We do? I didn't see it. Thir we get 13 and lose the Archon. They stay back, and then we they block another 2, our 3 and our 3, and then we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, yeah, they could also just not block the Pegasus. They just eat this. Yeah, that's right. Uh, if they if they bounce the Pegasus, then yes, we have ten. But if they just eat the Bleepus, we don't. Which is what uh, which is what Fool is saying. So no attacks. And Angel. Mm, but I think we're just dead, Nantuko. Maybe I'm not wrapping my head around it quite accurately, but... I know. No. Maybe I'm being too cautious, Nantuko. Maybe a three turn, because if they can't attack back, if the crack back isn't going to work. Well, now it comes down to this working out. Uh, they haven't been attacking, and now they are. If they've got stuff for this... Attempted a trade, we could be in big trouble. But we can't play around it. Yeah, I'm going to activate. Thanks, Hajj. Well, no need to activate. So where do we put this thing? We can just leave it there, but it hurts our ability to eventually spawn. Uh, so, I mean, or leave, you know. But in order for them, in order for a spawn to be a thing, we need to, the spawn needs to die, and we can't get the spawn to die but I'm going to take it and put it on the spawn. Because now, if they kill the spawn, the Sentinel's Eyes goes back in the yard, and the spawn can use the Sentinel's Eyes again if need be. Uh, on Pegasus, we get a 3-4. Um, right now, we need somehow the Farika's spawn to die. We need Oppo to decide to take out the spawn. Doesn't seem likely. Um... Yeah, exactly. But it's it's our it's our it's what we've got. And both things fly and nothing on board flies, so the attack all is just like it's all we've got. 
Nantuko's line earlier seems like it would have been better, but I don't know if it would have been enough given the dismissal they drew, but it, it, uh, decisions, not results. I'm just thinking about that decision still and uh, what was correct and how I could see it better in the future. Yeah, if we went eyes on hero this turn, we'd still have the spawn, uh, but we would lose the ability to bring back the spawn because we'd have to um, sack stuff in the yard to get the eyes back. Oppo's really worried and making sure they're, well, I shouldn't say that, I don't know they're worried, but Oppo is being deliberate about thinking this through, but they have nothing to worry about. I didn't. Uh, because we need, because the only way we have to win D is to get them low enough on life that chumping with the Pegasus and threatening a crackback could conceivably in, be enough to get them. Uh, and so holding back, like if we if we let them stay at their current life total, we would have no means to to win here. But as it is, we can at least gain some life. Yeah, we're in a very... We're, are you kidding, D? You note that they have a uh, Wings of Hubris, which can make this completely unblockable once. And they have a 5-5 five, five Flyer. We are in quite the hurry. So yeah, maybe if uh, maybe uh, if Nantuko is piloting, we we're gonna win. We would have a better chance at winning this one. But I was cautious on the turn, maybe where I needed to be pedal to the metal, because now we're pedaling to the metal and it's a little too late. All right, I don't know what we can draw to win, but let's find out. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is not gonna do it, folks. Good call, Nantugo. I think your line may have gotten us a win here. Wah, wah. All right, up against it. Our fouls to give are used up, and next loss, and we are out. I will definitely play until noon today. If we happen to bomb out of this one uh, pre-noon, um, I will... Did I add this to Dex yet? I'll make, I think I did. Uh, okay, yeah, I must have. Uh, anyway, we'll, we will... Uh, We'll battle with this against viewers. Oh, let's get rid of this. We have too many of these. Delete. Delete some of these constructed decks so that we can eventually play some limited decks. cut this constructed cat oven deck now nah, not no bribes are gonna work today d i got uh, i got too much to do today because of making up for yesterday the deck box style of 
numero uro is probably uro, right? Oh no, that's uh, sorry, that's the Mirage Mountain. I mean, sure. Yeah, if you if you just want to hear my price, sure. Let's call it a thousand subs today. Y'all want to give me a thousand subs? I will I will draft again. All right, sad truth of our ranking. Oh, did I still not do the sleeves? Still didn't do the sleeves, right? For mama. I think I made it my default, but I somehow didn't apply it to this deck. That's interesting. I don't know. Uh, I think you better find out, War Furnace. Um, let me get, uh, while we're here, I'm going to uh, grab a 30-second break to grab a beverage and a snack. I'll be right down. Realistically, my go-to snack is probably cereal. I like have I, I don't usually eat cereal for breakfast, but I like cereal uh, as a snack. Salty snack, I like the uh, onion pretzel bit bites from Hanover. Yeah, I think so. Uh, no black yet, but we can hero, and we have an eyes. I'm willing to keep this, but it's a it's a it's a slight keep. Hmm. What do you think? Spawn is good. I think we'll keep it. You got a hero in a sentinel's eyes. 3-3 three, three Vigilant is pretty good on turn 3. Still looking for that swamp, but... <clears throat> Let's see what we can do.
No swamp yet. I'm gonna go ahead and eyes up the hero though. Top deck a swamp right here and we're fine. You're funny, deck. Uh, let's see. They could have the White Omen. They play it and they uh, double block, but then we at least take out their Naiad and we have a Sentinel's Eyes in the graveyard, so I'm going to keep attacking. I don't mind that they used a card for that. Especially with us with nothing to do anyway. That changes things, though. Now we have our hand unlocked. I actually think I like uh, spawn over anything else here. Nothing to worry about in the yard for now. Yeah, let's go spawn. Interesting ace. Ace is like, well, since they sterned after combat instead of before, probably means they had a counter and just decided not to use it. Could be. Good read. I'm going to try and get him with uh, Mogus's favor here with a, an attack first. We don't mind if the spa spawn dies in a double block. And uh, if we can get one point of damage on the witness, then we get to favor it. They didn't fall for that, so now we're on uh, deciding how we're going to handle... The witness. I actually don't. I mean, we're at, we're ahead on the life race. Uh, let's get hero and harpy out, and actually just build our board of creatures out rather than worry about removing the witness right now. Let's wait till they realize they need to keep blockers back, and then remove a blocker. And we may be able to do remove a blocker, Mogus's favor, the hero, of the pride, and have a really big attack. Yeah, they could have drawn the Stern off the Thirst. That is maybe uh, about as equally likely. Can I get a Witness? Not that one. Bye-bye, spawn. We do have a revoke existence that we could uh, use to get that banishing, get our spawn back, if we find it. Uh, as it is. Well, we do get the final death attack with flyer play, at least. And if they're out of enchantments, maybe the scavenging harpy will be good enough. Could have been mantle, but like we can't really afford to play around stuff there. I don't know what we do. If we had, had the mantle read, I'm not sure what our play is. Uh, maybe we try to wait for them to tap out or something, but that seems unlikely. All right, that's a good card, but that's the bigger problem right there. Finding a land though, we get our Archon. That would be nice. All right. Uh, nothing. Uh, I guess we do have Sentinel's Eyes in the yard. But we'll Archon here. Hope it closes it out. Despite their pretty Brahmi crack in there building up an army.
Boo Earns. Marvell here sure has some good looking cards for this loser's bracket that we're in. Uh, we're going to go for uh, chumping our harpy. The sad part here is that Archon is not going to be findable by our Omen. I'm really disappointed about that. But they still don't have a flyer, so we can still get back the Harpy and still try and get in through the air. Uh, it's going to get harder and harder here with our six life, but I think we can go Swamp, um, Marauder, and Omen the Harpy at the end of their turn. Some say I never heard of you, a rap burglar. Eyes on pride. I was wanting to get the harpy back. So that's that's why I didn't do that line, but thank you for the sub, Paul. Three months sub. Nice. up stack trigger stop it oppo let's see if we found revoke existence off the top that would be nice. Still not quite enough. I think we're I think we're done. <laughs> I think even a, even a revoke existence at this point is going to be tough to turn into a win. Shatter would do it. Let's find a shatter. Blah. Okay, we get... Uh, we're not dead, 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 though. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I missed the upkeep scry. We're not just dead, though, are we? We have a block in the air, and we can chump, chump, chump on the ground. And let's put my upkeep stop on now so that if it comes to it next time, we can look for that shatter the sky. Uh, but let's see, do we have to play creature? We have a uh, camp block here. We have one, two, three blockers for one, two, three, four, five, six attackers. That's going to be lethal. So we need to um, play this out just to only take two from the tentacles. Yeah, we could also favor. Favor their flyer so that if it uh, attacks, we can trade with it. Is that your idea? We could also uh, we could also favor one of the tentacles. I think since we still need shatter, like I see what you're saying. If we put favor on their uh, wave rider, then even if they launch it, we we can trade for it. Uh, okay. Well, now and yeah, now especially we need to. I don't even know if this leaves us with the ability to win or not, but. I'm going to do this. I think we're still short. I think they get us. But we'll make them figure it out. All right, get your uh, get your decks out, folks. Folks, looks like we're one threeing this thing. Oh, no, they didn't attack with this. Maybe we had... Can we barely survive? No, I think we can't survive. Okay. Can't survive.
Well, bummer. Hmm. Buckeye is noting some new uh, keywords that could represent keywords being added to the game for Ikoria. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, before we uh, keep playing, I'm going to claim this prize. Oh, I did all that stuff to delete this and then um, failed to save it, I think. I, I cleared room for it and then didn't actually go and save it. Darn it. Well, that's all right. I'm, uh, you know what I'm going to do? Forget you, draft. We're going to call this done. I do have some other ones to finish, actually, and I need to do it before today. So um, what I'm going to do to kill kill the rest of the time is switch to a draft uh, that you haven't seen, and I'm going to I'm going to play that. <clears throat> so, ooh, look, looks like uh, direct messaging. How do we do that? Let's try that. Can I? Hi. Uh oh. Now there's a means to actually bug me. Don't bug me, or I'll just defriend you. <laughs> Hi, Eliatori. Oh, you can change your status. Let's see. But how do I do that? I should be I should do it from be able to do it from here, right? Okay. Ah, cool. Good. Good work, wizards. Yes, bugging other people, me bugging other people is fine, Tim Nose. Isn't that uh, I had to explain that? I didn't think that needed explanation, but I can confirm. Okay. Playing with new features when I should be saying goodbye to our YouTube friends. We'll catch you at the next draft, YouTube buddies. Thanks for watching. Sorry that didn't have better results, but that's how it goes sometimes. I'm largely happy with how we played. I think uh, Nantugo had that better line in that one game. Uh, missed a, uh, you know, a little bit late uh, on that, but... Overall, happy with how I played in that draft, just didn't get the results we wanted, so so be it. See you next time.